<laughs> yeah, you know what? It's uh, this is the crossover we needed today. All right. So I, what's funny is that I moved from Houston a year ago today. Wow. Really? Today. Yeah. So wow. Yeah, anyway, it's good we to miss see you guys. We, we miss, miss you. you if we don't I, tell you enough, we we do. <laughs> I literally was just in the sauna right now, so pardon my sweat and all of this. Uh, the the gym's right over there, but yeah. Uh, yeah, breaking news. We had we had to talk about this. Yeah. So tell I mean, us tell us about Devin White. What are the Texans getting? So uh, I've covered Devin White um, in every phase of his career. Basically, I, I used to cover LSU uh, when he was there in 2018. Um, you know, he went to the Buccaneers. Uh, obviously, had his Pro Bowl season there, Super Bowl there, and then um, he wasn't renewed in his contract. The Bucks let him walk. Uh, they executed his f- fifth year option. Um, and towards the end of that tenure, um, he was benched by Todd Bowles. And there was a time where it looked like there was tension. Uh, they go into the playoffs. He starts playing in a backup role. And then he enters free agency and was seeking for an opportunity to uh, show that he was a, a, a better linebacker, a place, a situation that he um, could thrive. And the Eagles um, are a team that has a history of, um, some would say low-balling the linebacker position in terms of that. General manager Howie Roseman would bucket that notion, but the last five years they haven't spent uh, very high, enough, actually ranking in the bottom two in that category for a large part of that. But Devin White was a perfect scenario for them because he was a guy that needed something to prove, and they could pay him uh, a one-year deal with a reasonable price to get him in the building. Um, you know, what happened with the Eagles is uh, Nicobe Dean is a – a third round pick that they had that had injuries last year. Roseman's very big on, uh, on him. He was big on the whole Georgia defense that he was a part of uh, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis, Nolan Smith. Others are on, on this defense, a part of that uh, uh, notion. So uh, Nicobe Dean was coming into this off season. It was wondering whether he would recover from his foot injury, Liz Frank um, surgery at, that ended his year. And they also signed Zach Bond, who had kind of a hybrid role with the saints an edge rusher at some times and sometimes played inside really just didn't really have a home position. So they were gambling that one of these people, uh, two of these three people would end up being their starters. So white came in and in training camp, watching him, it was kind of assumed that he was the starter. He was taking Mm -hmm. all, most of the first team snaps. Uh, He was starting in the preseason games of consequence so, it, you know, all of us make our depth chart and uh, projections. Of, you know, we talk to the people we can talk to. Uh, and the understanding seemed to be that White uh, was going to be the starter in 2024 for the Eagles. But um, he didn't travel with the Eagles to the week one game in Sao Paulo against the Packers. He had an ankle tweak going into that game. Um, and the Kobe Dean started. And then going into the next week, Vic Fangio in a press conference, we were asked about, you know, we asked him about uh, whether – White was going to start, whether N'Kobe Dean was going to start, and he said very plainly, no, N'Kobe Dean is the starter. Oh. Oh, damn. And the question was, okay, well, what you know, led you to that? And he said that he outplayed Devin White throughout training camp. So without the ankle injury, N'Kobe Dean would have been the starter in Sao Paulo. So you know, that led into kind of the conversation that was in Vic Banjo's mind, watching that, making a de- final decision that was surprising to even Devin White. We talked to him in the locker room. And, um, you know, hearing that in the press conference was kind of jarring for him. Oh, that's and, good. <laughs> well, that's a good way you to know, operate Fangio. It, it's, <laughs> you know, that's, that's Fangio, man. It's kind of interesting to hear and, and, and cover him because he's very blunt. He'll answer almost every question, and it's very simple. He doesn't really delve into the details of things, but he'll answer. Um, a lot of the players appreciate that. It's also kind of why – explains a little bit why some of the Miami Dolphins players uh, – we're kind of throwing shots at him after he left. There are some players that respond well to that, some that don't. Some situations work with that, where that works, and others where it doesn't. And this year, uh, you know, the Eagles seem Philly is kind of a you know, direct place anyway, so he seems to fit here um, in oh. that situation. But uh, regard like Devin White, I, I'll say this: attitude wasn't an issue with him. Um, I think a lot of the question with that ending in the Buccaneers was like seeing how Devin White would handle himself behind the scenes in Philly. Um, you know, every time he was available to speak in the locker room, he was very straightforward about his conversation with the Eagles. Like, you know, he had to work from uh, the depth chart. It was surprising, but it wasn't you know, hurtful to him. You know, he 
uh, even Fangio and Nick Sirianni, when they talked about him, said that he was still part of the plan. And that plan was, you know, he was a backup. And the, the way I'll describe this is like, you know, he, he came in to have an opportunity to prove himself. He's on a one-year deal and he had to, um, you know, there were, there were times with the Buccaneers, especially towards the end, where he was a very fast linebacker. Uh, his size, 240 pounds, you know, matched with that, you know, sub 4-4 speed was, uh, or I think it was just around 4-4 in the 40, was what made him terrific at LSU and at times with the Buccaneers. Sorry, I don't know where my camera is. No, you're good. You're there. Good. I need a I need someone to come and hold this for me. Uh, but uh, so you know to apply himself uh, with the Buccaneers and that uh, you know sometimes players with extreme athleticism sometimes rely on that too much, and he was running himself out of place, finding himself in positions where he was pursuing, especially in the pass game, sometimes in the run, overextending himself. Um, there were there were times where explosive plays come from that, and to instead apply himself within a system was something that he needed to to showcase. And the Eagles, you know, that was a scenario where he might have been able to learn that here. But at the same time, it's a one-year deal. So whatever he learned behind the scenes, if he was only an insurance agent for, you know, N'Kobe Dean, that was never going to play out on the field. And unless he was going to re-sign with the Eagles, there, uh, once he entered free agency, there wasn't going to be much evidence to other teams that, you know, some of the things that they would rely on conversations they'd have with the staff or the Eagles before they make any signing. So, um, so he's not a, he's that. not a bum is what you're saying. I, so you should, you should know this, like, you know, N'Kobe Dean, what he's done for the Eagles the last couple of weeks, he's been a primary, he's been a primary blitzer for them. A lot of simulated pass rushes, which was what Devin White was so good at, at LSU. So at the very least, you should understand that, you know, the Eagles didn't think he was better simply than N'Kobe Dean. Um, does that mean he's not better than what the Texans currently have on their roster with all the injuries? So manage your expectations with that. It's interesting to me that Devin White ends with up with the Texans because not only the situation, but D'Amico Ryan's being a former linebacker, you know, uh, the, the coaching staff being there in a way that they've been able to support the linebackers the last couple of years. So this is a situation where he can step in, apply himself within a system that he can further refine his game and have an opportunity on the field to showcase that. Does that mean that this is going to work out? No, I'm not saying that, but I think it's an interesting scenario. I think it's a good fit for them. And I wanted to address the attitude thing too, because of what I saw behind the scenes, what people might have questions dating back to his time with the Buccaneers. And also like, you know, we've in, you know, having covered, you know, Howie Roseman and Nick Casario, Casario doesn't seem to me to be a general manager who's going to try and sign a head case onto a team that has playoff implications you don't want to you know you, no one wants to mess up a locker room so i that's why i say those things about Devin white so that that's kind of the scouting report for you guys uh I like it. An, an interesting crossover today and it's a, it's a beautiful good. one it's a beautiful it's one. one dude what is the weather like there good dude, it's amazing it's amazing <laughs> My God. it's like it's 60 degrees with sun and no humidity and it's look, there's actually colors around me. There are there are leaves that are um, yellow. And, well, you know what? Uh, I'll, I'll talk to me. Talk to me in about a month and a half. Okay? Dude, it sucks. I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not, in February, I'm gonna be back in Houston. I still got family there. So like, there's no reason to be in Philly from at, from February even through like March. I remember being outside of the parking lot in February, or and I and I I was talking to um, a beat writer here, and I was like well, at least, you know, this ends in March. And he laughed. He's like, how about April? You know, it, it, it goes, <laughs> it, winter is long here and it sucks. Uh, but there are, there, there, are, there are good parts. Fall is actually the best thing about them. Yeah. So we appreciate you, Brooks, very much, man. We miss man, you out here. Dude. We yeah, miss we you miss on the streets. You. Oh, man. I, I, I miss it often in Houston. Still, you know, I appreciate you guys and still have a lot of friends and family there. So um, it's, it's, it's good to do this. Yep. Appreciate you, my friend. All right. Well, well, when you get back here in February, you make sure you come say hello. Oh, we will. Uh, I gotta, I gotta hit up uh, all the all the old old haunts. Uh, you know, the one thing they don't have is barbecue here. Yeah. I, I got it. My my parents. I, I bought a house here in Philly. Look That's at you. It's not that one. Um, but <laughs> living large. I, I was sent a smoker from my family for a housewarming, and that's how I'm known on on my neighborhood. Like all these row houses, you can see like there's no privacy. Um, so whenever I light that smoker up, 
everybody knows, you know, it's barbecue time. I, there was a guy. <laughs> barbecue <hey>, Brooks. <laughs> I made neighbor. I made ribs for the first time Saturday, man. How'd it go? How'd it go? It wasn't bad. I did the three, two, one. I kind of feel like I need to up it a little bit, like the the temperature on the recipe. But it was it wasn't terrible. It was good. It was okay. good. What was what was your temp? I think I was. I think it was one ninety and two twenty five or something, or one yeah, one. Yeah, I think yeah. it was one eighty and then two twenty five. Yeah, you need to get up two twenty, just around there. Look You'd at be you. Good. You need to eat. You know, two hours at you know. <laughs> I always go ribs. I go two hours with it, and then I add butter and brown sugar to it. Yeah, I and had then, brown sugar. I had some yeah. apple juice, some honey, all that. Yeah, okay. I, I, I mixed let it. That go I for another, let that go for another two hours. You got to wrap it that second hour, though. I did. Second, I did. Okay. All right. Yeah, but there was a guy behind me uh, that was doing his yard, and I'm trying to make friends, you know. So he's, like, literally peeking over the fence with his weed eater in this small backyard. Like, I'm telling you, it's, like, maybe 10 feet by 5 feet. Wilson and from Home Improvement, man. Exactly. He looks over yeah. like, what's going on? And I How do you know, neighbor Joe? I was like, you want a rib? And he's like, yeah. He like <laughs> reaches over, reaches over the fence. I give him a rib. And he's like, that's, I don't know if I can swear on this. But he's like, oh, yeah, it's yeah, awesome. You, you know, you and uh, I did, my neighbor to my uh, right has, you know, I, I, you know there, there's, a, there's a family there oh, with kids. And the smoker went through their air conditioning vent. And oh, she, no. she called her husband and was like, is there a fire like that? I don't know about it. Is there, is there electric wire? I'm looking, she's looking beneath the, the fence. And then she like finally looks outside and sees me. I was like, my bad. And so the Texans, the Texans uh, screwing up the streets here. So <laughs> good, man. they don't, they don't, they don't know how to deal with me. Oh, uh, good. This, you know how this ends. This ends with you turning into like a barbecue master in Philadelphia, not even riding anymore. You know what? Like, it would be a nice game. Sell out by noon and then go to the press conferences. I think I could work that out. <laughs> Bre bar breakfast barbecue with Brooks. Yeah. You know, just put a couple of racks of ribs out there. So I had some for five bucks a piece. I think I could, I could, I could work that out, you know? There you go. 